Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Golden Boy, and we're going to talk about all the things going on in the world of gaming and esports today. But this freaking train, stupid train in the background. Anyway, let's move on. So I think the news and, and the thing that everyone wants to talk about, it's been the most hotly demanded topic in the world of video games in the world of this industry that we work in is the new stardew valley content that's right stardew valley is going to be getting a multiplayer mode i'm so excited now concern ape the developer of the game did say that the multiplayer mode would be coming first to pc and then it'll be making its way over to console i personally cannot wait i've been gaming the crap out of this on the switch if you have a nintendo switch and you don't own stardew valley you're doing it wrong man before we get into the big news of the day, though, I do want to let everyone know, thank you so much uh, for the support and the love and, and everything that I've gotten uh, from all the various communities that I have worked with uh, throughout the course of my adventure uh, this last like couple weeks now. Uh, I went to the Overwatch World Cup, got to host over there, Overwatch community, incredible as always. Big thank you to everyone there and, and much love to that community for just really coming out in full force and supporting the Overwatch World Cup. That was an incredible experience. Thank you to Greg Miller and the best friends over at Kind of Funny for just being awesome as well. I uh, had a chance to host a Kind of Funny morning show and that was super fun. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out yet, please do so. I'll be sure to put a link in the description down below so you guys can go ahead and check it out. Greg Miller is an incredible individual and probably one of the hardest working people I've ever had the opportunity to meet in the gaming industry. And I know that there are many hardworking people, but Greg Miller, he really is a cut above a lot of folks with just the, the tenacity of which that he grinds each and every day. So much love to you, Greg. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to watching the Kind of Funny Morning Show each and every day. And thank you to Twitch and Totinos for hiring me for what could arguably be one of the most insane broadcasts I've ever done in my career. If you haven't watched that one, I'll be sure to put that in the link down below as well. The opening alone was just the greatest thing I've done in quite a while. And then I was just tossing Totinos at people and, and, and I got paid for it. So that, that counts as a win. And then lastly, the Rocket League community. Thank you. I love you. RLCS World Championship for Season 4 was incredible. The matches were godlike, being covered by ESPN and Kotaku and all the other gaming. For Squishy, just Squishy's insane, insane ceiling play. That was just ridiculous. So much incredibleness came out of that event. And 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 I think you guys uh, who tuned in were amazing. Like the Overwatch community, the Rocket League community came out in full force. And also thank you uh, for the kind words that you guys had given me about the stage hosting. Uh, you know, I, I had fun doing it. And I also want to thank all the casters for supporting me and giving me great information to be able to go off of my love for the game, but also the love for the people that I work with, I hope really came across, uh, not only on the stage, but just in the overall tone of the show. And, and I, and I had a blast. So thank you once again, uh, to Psyonix, to Twitch, to the RLCS family, to the Rocket League community. Uh, what an amazing experience that was. All right, now let's stop talking about all the nice things in the world. Let's get down to brass tacks. Let's talk about some serious business. And this is this is pretty serious, by the way. For those of you who don't know, what we're going to be talking about here is the recent situation with EA Star Wars. The new Battlefront 2 game is going to be coming out and or it's already out and it's it's yeah, it's not it's not pretty. So basically, uh EA decided to put a a loot box system in Star Wars Battlefront 2. It makes sense uh, because the DLC is going to be free as well as the additional heroes and, and whatnot. It's a practice that we've been seeing more and more in the gaming industry as of late. Now, before uh, I, I go into this, um, I do want to say that EA has hired me before to work events. Most notably, I did the E3 reveal for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, nothing in this video uh, is impacted by my relationship with EA. I, I respect a lot of the folks that I work with over there. And as I said before on my stream yesterday, I uh, have always appreciated the way that EA has respected me as a talent every single time I work with them. My experiences with EA as a talent 
has been nothing but incredible. Uh, and, and I actively look to work with them time and time again because of that, because of those interactions, because of the respect that they show. I do need to be honest here. This isn't a new show. This isn't a, I'm not a journalist, okay? I am an esports commentator, basically just talking about what's going on in the world of gaming and just providing my perspective. So take everything I say uh, with a grain of salt. Um, don't, you know, and, and, and I'm not saying like, oh, I'm gonna be super pro EA. I, I'm not because there there are some there are some things that I don't agree with, and then there are some things that I'm going to point out uh, that are obvious flaws on you know really on all sides of this of this situation. Uh, so let's just let's just stop with that and just go into it. Uh, but but here here are the issues. EA had decided to put in a progression system into Star Wars Battlefront 2 that would allow you to unlock heroes and star cards and all that stuff with points. But you can also choose to bypass the progression and just buy everything outright. And that would cost you a considerable amount of money to do so. Now, the reason why this is controversial uh, is because at the time, the amount of effort that it took for you to unlock these characters, I believe it was about 80,000 credits, was a considerable amount of time. And there was a recent report with the new changes because EA did respond and say that we are going to make some adjustments. They ended up bringing the cost down to, I think, 20,000 credits. So that was about 75%. They brought it down uh, to try and you know alleviate some of those concerns from, from the community. Uh, but people are still saying that that's too long. Now, a website called SWTOR Strategies or Star Wars The Old Republic Strategies.com actually tallied the time that it would take to unlock everything. And what they gathered is that it will take over 4,500 hours of gameplay to unlock everything or $2,100 to unlock all the items that are present in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, this is a... Uh, and I said it before, a standard practice in the industry because what we're starting to see now is that it, it's about retention, right? It, it's a retention play. Uh, one of the issues that Star Wars Battlefront had when it released was that it just didn't have people engaged for a very long period of time. The game was very shallow. While it was fun to play as Luke and Darth Vader and clash against one another on Hoth, it really didn't amount to all that much and you didn't get a, a good experience or a good long-term experience out of Star Wars Battlefront. And that was something that EA coming out for Star Wars Battlefront 2 wanted to address, which was to get people engaged, keep people playing for longer periods of time. This isn't a, a an evil tactic, by the way. This is a very standard practice across the board, right? To try and get people to stay and play the game because you know the the industry is very competitive now uh, more so even than what it used to be uh, and i'm just talking like a year or two ago because now we're starting to see the rise of br games mmos starting to kind of creep back their way into prowess you know you have your esports titles that are starting to to kind of shoot up as well and there's just kind of a lot going on in the space right now and everyone is competing for time because time is the most valuable thing. Whether it's Netflix, Hulu, the WWE Network, or it's Star Wars Battlefront 2, Call of Duty, Battlegrounds, Fortnite, any place that requires you to invest time into them, into a product, it's all competitive. They're all competing against one another. It's like a very common thing for the WWE to say, like, we don't compete against TNA. We don't compete against Ring of Honor. We compete against football because Monday Night Football goes on the same time as the WWE's flagship show, Monday Night Raw. So that is essentially the issue here. Everyone is competing for time and Time is the most valuable thing. So what did EA do in response? They wanted to make the process grindier because I'm sure, and it kind of felt that way if you go and you play the original Battlefront prior to the release of Battlefront 2, no one was really playing it anymore because it was absolutely nothing to play for. That was the same issue that Titanfall had as well. Back then when Call of Duty 4 came out and you started to get progression systems in games, that was like the hot thing. Everyone's like, oh my God, 
people people stick around if there's something to play for. I mean, I was playing Call of Duty 2 when the Xbox 360 came out, and there was nothing to play for. You didn't see your rank. You had no idea what was going on. You just played the game because that's that, right? There was no really other option. And the only other thing that you could play that hooked people was Halo 2 at the time. And this is purely talking from a console perspective, by the way. You were playing Halo 2. And, and it was fun, right? You were going through the ranks. You were just continuing to progress, go up, go down. And that actually retained people for quite a while. And that kind of brings me to this next issue here. Ultimately, as I stated before, time is the most valuable thing. And getting people to continue to engage in your game is super important. Hence why Battlefront 2 decided to do this. But there's another thing that keeps people engaged, and that's ranks. Ranked gameplay keeps people engaged because the desire to be better than someone else or to climb up a leaderboard and then you can get better and you could prove to other people that you are better. And that is something that keeps people glued. Halo was one of the first games that I remember when I was playing when I was a youngin, okay, to, to really do this well. I played Team Slayer, I played Team Objective, Big Team Battle, Clan Match, Major Clan Match, Minor Clan Match, whatever the case may be. I played those games, I played those matches just so I could progress. It didn't matter whether I was getting anything out of it, I just wanted to progress. I wanted to get better, I wanted to be at the top of the mountain, although I never really got there, you know, sad face. But for a game like Battlefront or Battlefield, this is very difficult to do because you're able to create a controlled environment, 4v4, 5v5, 6v6, if you're Overwatch, and then you're able to calculate ranks and really judge whether people can climb up the ladder. But EA has never really done this with Battlefield or with Battlefront. The fact is, this isn't gonna change. This industry is gonna continue to use this tactic because I don't wanna pay for, for DLC. I don't wanna pay for maps. If a new map comes out, I just wanna play the map. And this is a solution to that because with the retention play comes a need to fund the program moving forward, creating a live services model, which is something that EA does actually really well. So it's either you get ranks to keep people engaged or you create a progression system that is very grindy and very long to keep people engaged or a combination of both. You know, if you're like Splatoon or Overwatch, where the process takes forever to rank up and you get some points or you get a loot box for it, it's never really going to go away because people, and this is the thing that, that, that folks don't understand. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but the content that comes after a game is released, we have to pay for it, whether it's you know, through loot boxes and microtransactions within the game or paying $20 for the DLC. You, you have to pay for it because people worked on this. Now, there, there is an argument to be made, by the way, for the, the content that's cut out. Like day one DLC is probably like the scummiest thing. I, I personally do not like day one DLC because it makes it feel like, like, wait a minute, you designed this alongside with the game. Why didn't you just put it with the game? You know, day one DLC, in my opinion, is indefensible, but DLC post-launch, you know, far further down the line. <laughs> now that, that's something that requires a financial investment from the consumer if they want it. And whether that's through microtransactions or through paying for downloadable content bundles, you know, it has to be paid for one way or another. And I think a lot of people sometimes forget that. This system allows them to be able to give us the content for free. Cosmetic items, I don't really care about. I'll, I'll get them if I want it. Like Halo, for example, I spent I spent probably like an extra $100, $150 on Halo just because I just wanted to get the cool skin. To me, that was all right. All I did was play Arena. Now, I, I, I don't know from the Warzone player's perspective uh, how, how much they either hated it or loved it, but Halo was actually one of like the first games to really kind of push that and I remember talking to 343 about it and, and being like, Ugh, I don't know if that's going to work. And it turned out it did. It worked out really well. They ended up making a ton of money off of that. And more and more devs started to follow suit. But the situation with EA is, is very unfortunate uh, because now we're in this position where this game could fail. Uh, it, it could come out the gate. It could fail. Um, and we may never get another Battlefront game again. I highly doubt that will happen, but there is a probability that that is, that that is the case, that enough people were angry 
and decided not to purchase the game because of that. Uh, does EA listen? Well, I mean, it, apparently they are because they are looking to revert some of the, they, or they did revert those costs down. But now more and more people are complaining about, oh, well, there's too much time that I have to invest into the game in order for me to get what I want. And I think that that is a fundamental problem in the mentality of gamers these days. It's a, it's a desire to want everything, but yet not work for it. And we saw as evidence of Battlefront prior, the first Battlefront, if there's nothing to work for, then you're not going to stick around. Titanfall, another great example. The original Titanfall was nothing to work for besides like a flimsy progression system. No one, st no one stayed. No one, no one stuck around. Now people are like, well, this is too much progression. So it's about finding that balance. You can't always complain about wanting progression but wanting it all and expect someone to find a magical solution because it's either you play the game, you grind, and then you get some items or you get some heroes or you get whatever, or they just front load everything at you. And then people get tired of the game because they don't really want, there's nothing to really play for. And then they move on. And then you're left by yourself in Hoth playing with your lightsaber, wiggling it around. So it's about finding the balance. Uh, EA did ask for consumers to be patient and to, you know, kind of stick with them through this process as they look to find the balance, um, the balance of the force. Hey, that works, actually. Didn't even think about that. And then uh, Wall Street is predicting that, you know, it's not going to impact it all that much, but, it, you know, it, you may see some effect, but it's not going to be nearly as hefty as the Internet makes it seem. Oftentimes, the Internet has a very hive mind mentality where if someone says they don't like something, then five other people chime in and say, I don't like that too. Then they don't want to be on the outside of that. And they say, yeah, I don't want it. I don't like it as well. And even if they weren't going to buy the game, people were just chiming in and saying they didn't like it. And I think that also goes to the Infinite Warfare dislike debacle on YouTube, where Infinite Warfare was disliked to oblivion, but yet it didn't really impact the sales of the game. People still ended up buying the game anyway. Again, arguments could be made. Yes, they bought it for Modern Warfare Remastered or whatever. But they still bought the game. If they didn't, if they disliked it, they, they wouldn't have purchased it, right? No, that's just not how it works. People are still going to buy the game anyway. It's still going to make millions of dollars. And then they're going to make another one. And it's, it's very much going to be the same case here with Battlefront. But I think it is important, though, to continue to let these developers know, hey, the way of which you're going about this... I don't agree with, let's find a solution together. What I've been seeing though, and, and this kind of bugs me personally, uh, has been these developers receiving death threats, um, you know, just overall, just people being uh, very, very rude uh, to these folks who, who are normal people, just like, you know, you and I just want to make video games, make cool stuff and, and make people happy. Oftentimes they don't have a say in these kinds of decisions. But yet it, it feels as if it's just so easy to just bombard these people with insults and hate speech and all that. And I think we as a community should just do a better job of trying to dispel that. And I know this is asking for a very uh, tall task uh, with, you know, and, and, and it's not ultimately, I know my channel isn't going to change anything here. But for those of you who are watching, be a part of the solution, not the problem. And I think that's just where I'm going to end this today. So I want to hear what do you guys think in the comment section down below. What are your pers what's your perspective? It's a discussion. Let's let's have a conversation about this. I I, I know I was a little bit all over the place here, uh, but it's also because this is a topic that's a bit all over the place. So if you have a perspective and you want to discuss it openly with the community, by all means, put it down in the comment section down below because I want to hear what you guys have to say about this as well. If you happen to be a viewer of Twitch, I go live quite a bit. Now that I'm not doing any, any events for a little while, I'll be live in a more consistent basis. So you can follow my Twitch channel. A link will be found in the description down below as well. I'll be playing mostly Call of Duty. I don't know if you could tell, but I'm pretty excited. The game is sick. 
and I happen to really enjoy it. So if you want to, you know, jump onto the, to the stream, follow me on Twitter. I always post updates when I'm live on there, or you can just follow me on Twitch. You can get an email update and notification if you're on the site, all that good stuff. And if you happen to like today's video, you know what to do because every YouTuber asks you to do it. Give it a thumbs up. Why don't you subscribe to the channel? You know, all the usual things that people ask you to do on YouTube. And remember, this is a discussion. We're, we're here to have fun and talk about the things that we love about in this world, which is video games and esports. And I don't want to really talk about a lot of esports stuff today, but I'm sure that there's going to be a ton to speak about in the weeks to come. Launch of Overwatch League, CWL, Gears of War, Rocket League with E-League. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Oh, Rocket E-League. I'm a genius. I am a genius. All right, but that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Love you. I'll catch you later, and I'll see you on the other side.